On the first day, I said, this is not going to work. I mean, the guards felt awkward giving orders, and they'd say, okay, line up, repeat your numbers, and the prisoners start giggling. Hey, I don't want anybody laughing. Three, two, one. And then a very interesting thing happened. Dave Eshelman, who the prisoner's named John Wayne, like he's a Wild West cowboy, he begins to be more extreme. I decided that I would become the worst most uh, intimidating, uh, cruel prison guard that I could possibly be. I was sort of fascinated myself that people were believing the act, and I was trying to see how far I could take it before somebody would say, okay, that's enough, stop. We did have to do things like push-ups. Uh, we would have to sing things. At the beginning, we protested some of the actions. We did things to irritate the guards. So the guards' authority was challenged right off the bat. And the guards had to decide how they were going to handle that. And they had to decide it without our input. I mean, again, this was not a Milgram study in which we were standing over them telling them what to do. And they began to see the prisoner's behavior as a kind of an affront to their authority. And they began to push back. We would ramp up the general harassment, just sort of crank it up a bit. Nobody was telling me I shouldn't be doing this. The professor is the authority here. You know, he's the prison warden. He's not stopping me. This is unbelievable. They took our clothes. Hand off the door. There was the first evening a kind of rebellion that took place. The prisoners rebelled. They barricaded themselves in their cells and said, we refuse to come out. They took off their numbers. They didn't want to be de-individuated. They started cursing the guards to their face. And the key, the key turning point was the guards began to think of them as dangerous prisoners.